Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. We're here back looking at, as promised, the Smartfly yoke on the inside, and we're also looking at the Yoko by comparison. So um, I am not an engineer, nor do I play one on TV. So um, keep that in mind when you're hearing my feedback. This is my non-engineering feedback on um, these devices. So first thing you see right off is the roll axis here is the tension on that is controlled by on the Smartfly yoke two bungees you see there and then on the um, Yoko also two bungees but what's a little different on the Yoko is there's separate bungees for the pitch axis whereas on the Smartfly yoke oops I just bumped my camera on the Smartfly yoke the same bungees are used for uh, pitch and for roll, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just a different way of doing it. And I've seen it done this way before where you use the same bungees uh, for pitch and roll. Uh, the, a PFC yoke that I looked at many years ago worked that way. I have no idea if their yokes work that way now, but uh, long ago I looked at one that, that worked that way. So talking about this a little bit further in the roll axis, um, these bungees, and by the way, the Yoko is not attached to the table. Um, my table's too thick for the clamp. Um, but these bungees are clearly not meant to be um, user removed. You could remove them. It's not impossible to remove them, but the, the way they're anchored in here, it, it appears to me they don't intend for you to remove these. Now, on the, the conversely, on the Smartfly yoke, they give you a couple of extra bungees of different uh, gauges, and you can change out these bungees on the Smartfly fairly easily. Just kind of take the tension off and lift it out of there like that, and you can take the bottom one out too. Not quite as easy, but see, those can come out, and you can vary the... Um, amount of stiffness in the, I'm sorry, I keep bumping my tripod, but it's just the way I have this set up. Um, but you can vary the stiffness of the, of the movement by um, changing out the bungees. And I'm going to move my camera over just a bit because that's going to continue to happen. There we go. Um, so that's the, you know, the roll axis. Now on the pitch axis, um, that's where things get a little interesting. So the way the pitch axis moves on the Yoko, hopefully this can be picked up, but it slides on this rail right here. And I can see in here, I don't, I haven't talked to any engineers or anything, but it looks like it's a plastic bearing that goes along here. And that's why the Yoko, in my opinion, is so much quieter in the pitch axis, is they have a plastic, uh, some sort of composite bearing. Now over here on the Smartfly, as we mentioned before, there's a little more sound when you move the pitch axis. And I suspected that was probably ball bearings, but I couldn't really see what was going on in here. So I, uh, I emailed them and they said, yes, indeed, there are ball bearings in there. And you probably know when you're using smaller ball bearings and those are rolling across, they make a little bit of a noise. Now, Russ Barlow, if you watch his video, he complained about the initial unit that he got that when you'd make a small movement on the pitch axis like I'm doing here, it wouldn't always return to the exact same spot. And so the way they resolve that is by changing the bearings. The original bearings that, that Russ Barlow got were quiet, but they were plastic bearings. And the plastic bearings tended to bind just ever so slightly. And it, he, in fact, he didn't even notice it on his first pass. It wasn't until he started flying and he was trying to trim the airplane that he realized that this would not always return to the exact you know, center point. So by changing out the bearings, that is corrected, but the result is a little bit more noise when you're moving it on the, um, the pitch axis. And again, we talked about that on the first video. Um, now, of course, you can see here, also, the, you know, there's that uh, rail we talked about with the plastic bearing on the Yoko. There's actually two rails here on the Smartfly yoke. Hopefully you can see those there. And so there's, it's attached on either side and that's what it slides forward and back on is that those two rails in there on either side here. So uh, that is a little bit of a difference in how that moves. Now, 
Um, on the roll axis, um, I can't really see what's going on in here and I'm not going to take it apart, um, but they feel pretty similar on the roll axis and is as how things are executed. Now let's talk about the wiring a little bit. Um, we have had a couple of issues with on the Yoko where these plugs will come undone. In fact, we had one just recently um, where this plug backed its way out. Now they have hot glue on here, but for whatever reason on the customer we were talking to, the, you know, the, the yoke quit working, they took the cover off and they just kind of went boop and pushed it down and plugged it right back in. Um, so that has happened a couple of times on the, the Yoko. Now over on the SmartFly, we've uh, got a, some form of, of glue here holding these wires on. And, you know, the SmartFly, it seems that they're constantly improving it. I mentioned that the first unit that Russ got had a different uh, kind of bearing in here. Well, all, they've already also changed this wire situation out. So there are apparently 12 wires in here that run back to these two connectors. On the new unit, which I'll, I'll put a picture up here in a minute, um, that they're shipping now, I say new unit, I mean, it's the same unit, just with this wire is different. They only have five wires connected here. And another concern I had was this is kind of sharp metal here and you have these wires passing through here and you can see, and I'll flash a bigger picture up, where the uh, insulation on these wires is already starting to get scraped off and you have like wire insulation dust on here. And so that would have been a major concern of mine, but they have changed this design. It's only five wires now. Instead of using the split loom, it's got um, a piece of insulation on the outside here that protects the wires on the inside. So I think that situation is going to be a whole lot better. And again, uh, you should have seen or will see a picture of it um, that they sent me in, uh, in how they changed that out. You see that we've got the, um, the bungees here attached to the shaft. They both do that in, in a similar manner, but you've got, um, I guess these are probably nylon or some sort of plastic holding these down. Uh, I will mention that the SmartFly, this is metal here uh, on both sides. So very robust. I don't know if these over time, I've, again, no idea whether these will be any kind of issue. Uh, but they are plastic. And then in the middle, they have this piece that goes here and sort of protects the bungee. So you put that where it comes in contact with this piece if you were to ever decide to change this out. Oh, by the way, also mentioned they do send uh, an Allen wrench along with it, which of course I can't put my hands on right now, but they send a little Allen wrench that allows you to take the four screws out, excuse me, the four screws out over here to take the uh, cover off. On the Yoko, it's just uh, eight Phillips screws. Here it's four sort of Allen screws. Um, the way that these bungees, you, th this plastic piece stops from coming off is held on with this metal um, clip type thing. Whereas on the, um, it's, it's really hard to tell how it works on the, the Yoko. This is sort of low tech and that low tech isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes low tech, sometimes you can over engineer things, um, but it's just, uh, that's how that's held on is they put this metal sort of necklace on and then that prevents this from coming off. So if you don't want to use the clamping mechanisms, and we've talked about the shortcoming, cut shortcomings with the clamping mechanisms on these, you've got four screws here on the Yoko, where you, you know they're threaded screws. I don't know the off the top. I'm sure it's in the specs off the top of my head. I don't know the size, but you can screw this down to your cockpit, and you have similar type screw holes here and here, and a corresponding on the other side for the Smart Fly. So if you wanted to you know, just screw that down to uh, whatever cockpit you're using. And that is a, th a thing also I'll mention is um, one thing you've got to consider when you're trying to decide between these yokes is a lot of cockpits out there have been designed to work specifically with the Yoko and other products like the, the Honeycomb. Whereas I doubt there's any or very few that have at this moment in time been designed to work with the SmartFly. That doesn't mean they won't work, but it may take some retrofitting or maybe you'll have some, some space on the sides here where you know, you'll know you see a gap or you know whatever. So just be aware that you'll need to look at your um, dimensions on things. Obviously the SmartFly is 
several couple inches longer and you know not as wide so uh, those are considerations as well um, on this shaft here for the um, elevator axis and these again are just observations the the one for the yoko is the support for it starts right here and then all of this including through this hole is all suspended here from this whereas on the smart fly you've actually got a bearing here which by the way they said they've actually improved this bearing since they sent it to no i'm sorry no that's the other bearing i don't think they've changed this i don't believe um, but anyway there's support right here for uh, the shaft uh, it's not only supported back here but also supported here and then on the yoko again um, all of this is the this is the last line of support not saying it's a problem just pointing out differences that I see that could be noteworthy. So um, you probably see here this, uh, these, this set of teeth. And as you move this along, hopefully this is showing up. Uh, as you move this along, it spins this gear. And that's what measures how uh, far you've moved the pitch axis. And over here on the smart fly yoke, it's a similar situation. You've got this, these teeth right here. Hopefully that's showing up. And then you have a, a set, a, a gear right here. So when you move this back and forth, uh, 